Hello everyone. The topic for today's session is eyeball. The eye is an organ of sight. The sense of sight perceived through the retina of the eyeball. So it is protected by the surrounding structures. So the eyeball is placed in the orbit that is bony orbit and surrounded by the extraocular muscles and also the, the periorbital part of fat. So the eyeball is spherical in shape and measures about 2.5 centimeter. It is made up of three concentric coats, the outer fibrous coat consisting of sclera and cornea. Middle vascular coat consists of the choroid, the ciliary body and the iris. The inner nervous coat consists of the retina. Sclera, it is opaque and forms the posterior 5 sixth of eyeball. It is composed of dense fibrous tissue and it is firm and maintains the shape of the eyeball. It is thickest behind near the entrance of the optic nerve. So the other side of the entrance of the optic nerve it is weak and surrounding that it is having a number of perforations uh, through which uh, the optic nerve fibers will be entering. So that will give the appearance of a sieve. So because of that sieve like appearance this area it is termed as lamina cribrosa. The sclera is thinnest 6 mm behind the sclerocorneal junction where all the recti muscles are inserted. So the outer surface of the sclera is white and smooth covered by tenon's capsule. The anterior part is covered by conjunctiva. The inner surface is brown and grooved for ciliary nerve and vessels. The sclera is separated from the choroid by perichoroidal space. So in this space there will be a delicate cellular tissue that is termed as the suprachoroidal lamina or the lamina fusca of the sclera. So the sclera will become continuous with the cornea at the sclerocorneal junction also known as the limbus. So below that the deep part of the limbus contains the circular canal known as the sinus venosus sclerae or the canal of squan. The aqueous humor drains into the anterior scleral or the ciliary veins through this sinus. So here we can observe the conjunctival part of the sclera appearing the white and the another diagram it is showing the limbus that is the junction between the sclera and the cornea. Posteriorly the sclera is covered with a dural sheath of optic nerve. It provides the insertion to the extrinsic muscles of the eyeball. The recti in front and the obliqueae muscles behind the equator. The sclera is pierced by a number of structures that includes the optic nerve which pierces it little inferomedial to the posterior pole of the eyeball. The ciliary nerves and arteries pierce it around the entrance of the optic nerve. The anterior ciliary arteries derive from muscular arteries to the recti, pierce it near the limbus and the four venae Verticose or the choroid veins pass out through the sclera behind the equator. The sclera is almost avascular except the episclera. The episclera is the tissue between the conjunctiva and the sclera. So this part is vascular and other than that the other part of the sclera is avascular. The functions of the sclera 
It protects and maintains the shape of the eyeball, provides attachments of extraocular muscles, supports the inner layers of the eyeball and maintains the optimal intraocular pressure between 15 to 20 mm Hg. Next is cornea. Cornea is transparent. It forms the anterior one sixth of the eyeball. So again the junction of the sclera and the cornea is known as the sclerocorneal junction, the limbus. So it is more convex compared to that of the sclera. The convexity decreases as the age advances. So the anterior chamber is present between the cornea and the lens. Actually the area between the cornea and the lens they constitutes the anterior segment. The iris will divide it into the anterior and the posterior chamber. So cornea is also avascular. It gets its nutrition from the loops of capillaries at the conjunctivo corneal junction, acquires humor from the anterior chamber of the eye and the lacrimal secretion spreading as fluid film over the anterior surface of the cornea. It is supplied by ophthalmic nerve and short ciliary nerves. The clinical aspect Cornea is used for grafting or transplantation as it is avascular. Injury to the cornea can cause opacities that may interfere with the vision. The anteroposterior diameter of the eyeball and the shape and curvature of the cornea determines the focal point. If there is any change in this focal point results in either myopia or short sightedness or hypermetropia long sightedness. Next is the middle coat which is made up of the choroid ciliary body and the iris. The choroid is the thin pigmented layer it separates the posterior part of sclera from the retina. Anteriorly it ends near the ora serrata and posteriorly it is interfered or perforated by the optic nerve. So ora serrata means it is the junction between the photosensitive and non photosensitive area of the retina which is present between the limbus and the equator of the eye. The choroid is having two surfaces. The outer surface is separated from the sclera by suprachoroidal lamina. Here the attachment to the sclera is loose so that we can strip it off easily. The inner surface is firmly united with retina. So the inner surface is firmly attached with the retina through the suprachoroidal lamina, vascular lamina, the choriocapillary lamina and the inner basal lamina or the membrana of brooch. The ciliary body is a thickened part of the uveal tract lying posterior to the corneal limbus. It is continuous anteriorly with the iris and posteriorly with the choroid. It suspends the lens. It is triangular in cross section, thick in front and thin behind. The scleral surface shows the ciliary muscle and the posterior part is known as the pars plana and the anterior part is known as pars plicata. The ciliary zonule it is a thick and vitreous membrane fitted to the posterior surfaces of ciliary processes. The posterior la layer lines the hyaloid fossa and the anterior layer forms the suspensory ligament of lens. The ciliary muscle it is a ring of unstripped muscle containing the longitudinal or meridional fibers 
the radial fibers and the circular fibers. The longitudinal or the meridional fibers arise from the projection of the sclera near the limbus. It radiate backwards to the supracoroidal lamina. The radial fibers are obliquely placed and gets continuous with the circular fibers. The circular fibers lie within the anterior part of the ciliary body close to the lens. The contraction of all these part relaxes the suspensory ligament. It is supplied by parasympathetic nerves through the edinger vespal nucleus, the oculomotor nerve and the ciliary ganglion. Next is the iris one of the part in the middle coat. It is the anterior part of the UL tract forms the circular curtain and the gap between the iris is known as the pupil which act as an adjustable diaphragm. So the iris is placed vertically between the cornea and the lens. The peripheral margin is attached to the middle of the anterior surface of the ciliary body. It is separated from the cornea by iridocorneal angle or the angle of the anterior chamber. The central free margin rests on the lens. So the anterior surface is uh, covered by single layer of mesothelium and the posterior surface is double layered of pigment cells. The main bulk of the iris is made up of stroma which consists of the connective tissue and the pigment cells. The color of the iris uh, determines uh, by the number of the pigment cells. If there is no pigment cells then the iris looks blue color and it is having a circular muscle called as the sphincter pupillae. It is a well developed ring of muscle lies near the margins of the pupil. It is supplied by parasympathetic nerves. The dilator pupillae, these are ill defined sheet of radial muscle fibers placed near the posterior surface of the iris. It is supplied by sympathetic nerves. So, the iris and the pupil they regulate the amount of light to enter into the eye. So the iris is a colored ring. It helps in opening and closing and control the amount of light entering the eye. So it acts as a diaphragm in microscope. Whereas the pupil is a black center that is the hole of the iris where the light enters the eye. It acts as aperture in the camera. So pupil is a central hole between the iris. So when the eye needs more light to enter that is as in, in dark the pupils gets larger allowing more light to enter the eye. When the eye needs less light to enter when it is very bright the pupils gets smaller and allowing the less light to enter the eye. So that is how the iris and the pupil adjust themselves to allow the required amount of light into the eye. Next is the inner layer that is retina. It is a thin delicate inner layer of the eyeball continuous posteriorly with the optic nerve. Its outer surface is attached to the choroid and the inner surface is in contact with the hyaloid membrane of vitreous. So opposite to the optic nerve there is a circular area called the optic disc which is about 1.5 millimeter in diameter. The retina is having three parts that is optic part, ciliary part and the iridial part. The optic part contains nervous tissue and it is sensitive to light. 
it extends from the optic disc to the posterior end of the ciliary body. The anterior margin forms the ora serrata. The ciliary and the iridial, iridial part of retina covers the ciliary body and iris. It is thin and non-nervous and it is insensitive layer. It is made up of two layers of epithelial cells. So physiological blind spot. So there is a physiological cup which is a depressed area of the optic disc where there is no rods and cones. So it is insensitive to light that is why it is called as the physiological blind spot. The another uh, depression or the circular area that is called macular lutea present at the posterior pole of the eye 3 millimeter lateral to the optic disc. It is avascular and yellow in color. The center of the macula is called as the fovea centralis. It is the thinnest part of retina and it contains only cones. The rods are absent in fovea centralis. So the site of maximum acuity of the vision is the this fovea centralis. So next is the rods and cones which are the light receptors of the eye. The rods contains the pigment called the visual purple and it responds to the dim light that is the scotopic vision. So the fovea is the place where there is no rods only the cones are present fovea is nothing but the center part of the macula. The cones responds only to the bright light or the photopic vision. It is sensitive to color and the fovea centralis as only the cones. The number of cones diminishes towards the periphery of the retina. So in the peripheral zone more number of rods and less number of cones. So in the fovea centralis only cones no rods and in the physiological blind spot no rods and cones. The retina is composed of 10 layers supplied by the central artery of the retina. So this artery supplies the deeper layer of retina up to the bipolar cells but the rods and cones are supplied by diffusion from the capillaries of the choroid. The clinical aspect the retinal detachment occurs between outer single pigmented layer and the inner nervous layer. It is a medical emergency. It can be repaired by silicone sponge which is kept over the detached retina with the help of bands. Through the ophthalmoscope we can see the small vessels in the retina. So in diabetes and hypertension there will be a changes in the vascular uh, structure within the retina. So we can observe through the ophthalmoscope. Next is the aqueous humor. It is a clear fluid fills the space between the cornea and the lens behind the anterior segment. It divides that by the iris into anterior and the posterior chamber. So the aqueous humor freely communicate with each other through the pupil. So the aqueous humor is secreted into the posterior chamber from the capillaries in the ciliary processes. It passes into the anterior chamber through the pupil. From the anterior chamber it is drained into the anterior ciliary veins through the spaces of iridocorneal angle or the angle of anterior chamber and the canola square. So any interference with the drainage of aqueous humor into the square results in increase in intraocular pressure. So functions of the aqueous humor, the intraocular pressure is due to the aqueous humor. If it is more then it there will be raise in the intraocular pressure. It maintains the constancy of the optical dimensions of the eyeball and it nourishes the avascular tissues of the cornea and the lens. So the aqueous humor is 
containing the ascorbic acid, the glucose and amino acids. Clinical aspect. So, whenever there is a overproduction of aqueous humor or there is a lack of its drainage or both because of both the reason there will be raise of intraocular pressure leading to a condition known as the glaucoma. Lens. Lens is a transparent biconvex structure placed between anterior and posterior segments of the eye. It is circular in outline and 1 cm of diameter. It is having two surfaces anterior which is flattened by tension of the suspensory ligament and the posterior surface it is more convex. It is enclosed in a transparent capsule which is thickest anteriorly near the circumference and below that there will be a presence of capsular epithelium. The capsular epithelium is single layer at the center of the lens but towards the periphery it, these cells are elongated to form the fibers of the lens. So, these fibers are concentrically arranged and forms the lens substance. So, in the center of the lens the these fibers are formed the older fibers are present in the center and this is called as the nucleus whereas the periphery they will contain the newer fibers and they are uh, soft in consistency they are called as the cortex. The lens are having the two poles the anterior and the posterior the central points of the anterior and the posterior surfaces is called the anterior and posterior poles respectively. The joining of these two poles gives the axis of the lens and the surrounding circumference is called the equator. The suspensory ligament of lens or the zonule of the zin, it re retains the lens in position and its tension keeps the anterior surface of the lens flattened and the fibers are attached to the ciliary processes, furrows between ciliary processes and ora serrata and centrally it is attached to the lens. The clinical aspect, so as the age advances the lens becomes opaque, so then it is called as the cataract, the lens has to be replaced in such cases. The vitreous body, it is a colorless jelly like transparent mass fills the posterior segment of the eyeball. It is enclosed in the hyaloid membrane attached to the optic disc and the ora serrata. So, posteriorly the optic disc and anteriorly the ora serrata and in between this it is free and it lies in contact with the retina. So, questions for the assignment, short notes on cornea, choroid structures piercing the sclera, aqueous humor, ciliary muscle, the lens and retinal detachment. Thank you.